Could you give me three words to describe it? The Nurco Optic is... Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy here at Pink Bike's annual field test in Pemberton, BC, and this is Norco's completely new Optic. It's a 125 millimeter travel trail bike with a 144 cup front that's rolling on 29 inch wheels. All right, frame details, it's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot of craziness here. There's room for a 2.5 inch rear tire on this bike with 125 mil travel. You don't often see that together. Internal cable routing and there's a set of bolts underneath here so you can attach a pump or some kind of tool kit, whatever you like. It's a horse link system, vertical shock, little tiny rocker arm, pretty straightforward. But there is something interesting here. They're specking RockShox's Super Deluxe Ultimate DH shock. And guess what? It does not have a cheater switch. There's no pedal assist switch on this shock, only a low speed compression dial and a rebound dial. Norco has gone heavy where it counts. Four piston brakes on all the models across the line. Up front, you get a Pike Select, adjustable low speed compression lever, and you get a SRAM GX drivetrain with a set of carbon cranks. So that's your introduction to the Optic. We're gonna go ride this little bike a whole load here in Pemberton. We're gonna report back and tell you how it feels. Like all the other bikes at Field Test, we're using control tires. They're from Maxxis XO Plus casing, so fairly sturdy tires. Tire pressure, 21, 23 PSI. Both Kazmer and I weigh the same, 155 pounds, so we can ride the exact same suspension settings. In the back, 30% sag, and we're on a large with a 480 millimeter reach, so it's pretty roomy. All right, so we did a ton of climbing on this bike and a lot of it was on some pretty technical trails. We climbed up the NIMBY climb here in Pemberton, just behind the house. And in a lot of ways, the bike climbs very good. It's very efficient, but it doesn't handle like your, you know, your usual 125, 130 millimeter travel trail bike. It's not that short and it doesn't feel that small in the technical sections. Yeah, you're talking about old fashioned bikes. Yeah. As far as modern bikes go, it feels pretty normal to me. I've been riding a lot of more longer travel, kind of enduro bikes. And so the handling, I got along with it right away. Super easy to just maneuver. So the Optic has 435 millimeter chainstays. Well, for this size, it's a cool feature that the bikes have. The chainstay length increases as you go up in size. Um, but I found those are a little easier to handle in some of the tighter switchbacks that we encountered compared to the pole, which has 450 millimeter chainstays. As far as the rest of the suspension, actual suspension movement when you're climbing, it's pretty calm. Yeah, I thought the bike pedaled really good. With 125 millimeters, it should pedal good. This thing, it might only have 125 millimeters, but man, it goes down like a bat out of hell. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. And we yeah. took it, like we said, the Whistler Bike Park. In addition to our test loop, I mean, I took this thing on A-Line, uh, Crack Addict, it has a different name, but that's what the trail's called. Um, just some kind of rocky stuff and some jump trails you wouldn't normally think it'd be fun on a bike like this. I had a great time, to yeah. totally comfortable. It wasn't as if I was on the edge of the bike's limits. Can you name another 125 millimeter travel bike that you would like to ride in the Whistler Bike Park? Day yeah. in, day out? Not really, off the top of my head I mean, yeah. for a while. Right? Yeah, and I think a lot of that is down to the smart spec. They've got that shock on there, it's got more oil, it's gonna be more consistent. They got four piston brakes. Unfortunately, they're resin only rotors with resin pads, but whatever. <laughs> the rear end of this bike is really impressive. Yeah. Just 125 millimeters of travel, but they've done a lot with it. The last time I was this impressed with the rear end, it was the SB100. This time, it's the new Optic, 125 millimeters. You know, for that much travel, it's pretty simple on top. Feels like there's a lot of supporters there should be, and at the other end of the stroke, Kaz. Yep, no harsh bottom out. Yeah. Um, we rode this bike a lot in the wet. It's kind of wet and slimy, and that's when you really want that traction. You want that nice, supple feel. This bike had it. So basically, we used free lap, and we set a cone at the top and bottom, and we used afternoon delight into lower Whistler downhill. Uh, it's fairly rocky, fairly fast, fairly chunky, but there's also some berms and stuff in there, and kind of, I would argue that it's probably more challenging than what the average trail bike sees. Yeah, exactly. It's a good way to kind of push the limits and get just a bunch of times to see, you know, yeah. which one ended up quicker. Yeah, so the Optic was my second fastest bike. It was 5% slower than the Pole. The Pole was easily the fastest, but it was 1.2% faster than the other bikes. For me, this happened to be my fastest bike. It was two different days of testing though, so there's lots of variables, but I put down my quickest time. It was about 2.5% faster than the Pole.
Uh, there's a few interesting things on here. First thing I'm gonna talk about is that X-Fusion Manic seat post. It's not the most expensive thing around, not the sexiest thing around, but it just works. As for me, one of the not so positive aspects was the fact that Norco chose to spec those resin only rotors. Yeah. And what resin only means is you can only use resin pads. It might be nice and quiet, but metallic pads are stronger and work better in the wet. We live in a place where it rains a lot, so for me, I would have to swap out the rotors and the pads if I purchased this bike. Now the bike is spec pretty well for how much it costs, carbon frame. Obviously they have to save money somewhere at the cockpit. It looks pretty cheap. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> like of like that house brand stuff that yeah. used to have. It's just not as pretty. Yeah, it, works it doesn't fine. matter, it works fine, but I could see some people want to upgrade that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Other smart things, stands, wheels, zero troubles, yeah, and that's Ram drivetrain. both of us, I think we agree, probably the most fun bike in this category. But to goof off, do what you want. Another pro is the bike has excellent geometry. It's really forward thinking, you got that steep seat tube angle, slack head tube angle, kind of everything I'd say most consumers are gonna be looking for in their next bike. It's all there. Uh, also the suspension tune itself, it's really dialed. Felt great, we didn't have to adjust it, mess around with any volume spacers or anything like that. So mm -hmm. they nailed it there too. So we gotta talk about cons too. Now this bike was a lot of fun. But one thing that I should mention is that the geometry, it lets you go way faster than you think you should be going on a 125 mil bike or maybe do things that you don't think you should. Sometimes you don't have the suspension to back you up. So I kind of found, I definitely was on a little more of a knife edge on this bike. If you mess up, there's less travel. It's probably less traction, you know, than something more forgiving. So just something to note. Yeah. Now the other thing, we already talked about it, those resin pads and rotors. This bike deserves something better. Get them out of there. Who is the optic for? Uh, basically anybody that wants one bike that's gonna pedal a lot. I mean, you could ride this thing as far as you want. I'd love to ride this bike on big days, four, five, six hour days, but at the same time, you can have a lot of fun. You got some friends with enduro bikes. Yeah, it's a pretty quick bike, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty fast. I mean, if you really are gonna be doing enduro races and that kind of thing, you're probably looking in the wrong category. Yeah. But this one does let you push your limits into that more gravity oriented realm. And it's just kind of great fun bike that you're gonna to wanna to put a lot of miles on. I would say that who it isn't for though is someone who wants maybe a traditional handling bike. Uh, there are still those people out there. I mean, this thing isn't short and it's pretty slack for what it is. It all works on the trail, but hey, maybe that geometry is not for you. Look at the numbers, make your decision. All right, so that's everything about the Norco Optic. Stay tuned for more videos from Pick Bikes Field Test as well as a roundtable discussion where we argue the pros and cons of all these things.